in this video I'm going to convert one or both of these cordless screwdrivers uh, from NICAD to lithium ion 18650s. Okay. Alright, so I probably had these for a decade or so, or more, who knows. <laughs> but let's take a look at them. So this one is an adjustable with a hex head, quarter inch. It has a recharging port in it. Out of this, I've already taken all the screws out. See that there. So it's got two small sub C. Actually, they look very much smaller than a. So this is a sub C. It looks smaller than a sub C. So maybe it's a sub sub C. I don't know. And I believe I just tried to charge them, and so I think that's about. Usually these are a volt and a half a piece, or 1.2. But so that's around three volts. Uh, and I'm going to replace it with an 18650, so plenty of room in there, but I'm going to probably use, I'm not just going to weld it in there or, or solder it or whatever, I'm going to use a case with a button and everything, so that'll be later. Uh, there's that one, this one, same thing. Uh, I can kind of feel a middle there. So this is two sub-C batteries together, so probably also. Um, so this one had a charger that it plugged into, completely lost that, doesn't matter. Um, and I accidentally just dropped this out and dumped all this stuff over, but uh, this motor, I just tested it, works just fine, batteries are dead even though they're charged, not enough amps. Uh, the other one uh, pulled the front off of it, also doesn't work, but I tested it and the motor doesn't even work. Um, so, actually these motors look similar, so uh, I was planning on only doing one of these, so I might, so I might uh, just do this one and steal the motor out of that and just swap them. But so how I'm gonna do that is I have a previous video where I took apart one of these flashlights, and I'm going to use or rework uh, the components in here to make a. To make a tube that I can just have a battery sitting in, it'll be sticking out of the back of here. So that one's actually pretty long. This one, maybe a little bit longer. It doesn't really matter you know, how much more it's sticking out the back. But I have to also get this component into there. So I might have to take this down. So that's half the project, is getting this down to size and mounted inside of here. Um, I was actually looking for a plastic one, couldn't find a plastic one, this is only 10 bucks. So came with a battery and it has its own charger built into it. So could charge it if I wanted to in this device or take the battery out and charge it separately. All right, so I cut out the back and these ribs pretty easily with uh, snips and an X-Acto knife on both sides. Uh, and then when I went to fit this in here, it fits pretty well, but it's obviously too thick. Uh, so I was thinking of grinding this down on a bench grinder, but uh, looking at it, I might just chop it off right there. It's pretty thin in that corner. Uh, the, 
connector end actually just sits in here, so this is, doesn't serve a purpose in this application. So I'll probably cut that completely off, probably put some notches in it so I can screw it in once it gets down in there. And then this will be only sticking out the end a little bit. And it'll work much better. Okay. So as for this, let's see if I can get a good close up. <clears throat> It's focused. Okay, so the power, positive power from the front comes basically through these two holes to this, this, and this. So I'll probably tap off on that. The negative, which is the case, is this exterior ring, which is on both sides. Uh, but it's not actually that terminal. That's for the light would be. It's actually these three, so I'll be tapping off of those. So I'll probably remove all of these and disconnect the wires from the motor switch, and I'll remove this charging things. It doesn't serve a purpose. So this other one, I'm probably not going to do a, probably not going to use this other flashlight on that one. Um, looking at the mechanism that came with it, it's kind of worn out. So, not going to use it, but I'll keep the motor, since it's just about the same motor, um, as a backup. All right, so, cut the end off, and then soldered, let's see if we have good, the positive and negative leads to the tabs on there. I'm slightly concerned about maybe the amps going through there, if it doesn't work. I always drill a hole straight through, solder right on the front. Actually, quite a ways down in there. That seems peculiar. Does that work? <laughs> Where's my battery? Okay, so that's there. Huh, so that's all the way down in there. Interesting. Whereas that stopped it quite a ways away. Why? Am I missing something? Hmm. How much tension does this have? No, that's normal. Okay. So, plug that in. Okay, so that's on there. And... Turn it on. <laughs> okay. So, threw some hot glue down in there. And let's see how this is going to fit. There's that. And this thing needs to go in there just like that. Okay, right. All right. Okay, so then, all right, so I got it back together, uh, and it works just fine. Uh, obviously, shut the battery off in the back, it doesn't do anything. It's got this ratcheting uh, adjustment on it for torque. Uh, so, if I, I'm going to put, like, computer-related stuff probably together or not. Let's go with that. Okay, so if I like take an adapter, put it in there, find like some computer part I'm gonna take apart. So that's on one, I suppose. That's 
kind of loud. <laughs> but then if I put it down to one. See, it's perfect. So it stops it from over torquing and rip stuff apart. Cool. So that, that worked just as I wanted it to. So then when the battery dies, you can just unscrew this and put another battery in or unscrew it and hook up the USB and charge it. Okay. All right. All right. So I took apart the other flashlight and let's get a close up on this. So I'm going to uh, pull these off, leaving these resistors and these two diodes. I don't really need that one, but I'll leave it there anyway. And then I will need to bridge from there to there. So the case ground, so it gets to the resistors. And then I'll have a flashlight, which I'm not going to use for the other drill. That just turns on and off instead of having all the options. Okay, so when I pulled the uh, chips off, uh, on the underside was written H5691D1. I couldn't find anything online about that, but we know what it does. Multifunction pulse width modulating. Okay, uh, also I found another trace underneath. Let's see if I get a better view. Right. Okay, yeah, there's another trace going to this other pin. Okay, so on here, I did bridge across those, and that should work out just fine. Okay, so got that back together. Spring clip didn't go flying all over the place like last time. Uh, and I need to turn it on. Oh. Obviously, it doesn't have the functionality anymore. It just turns on and off just how I want it. Nice and simple. All right, so there's a little bonus. Any questions about either of these builds? Put them in the comments below. Thanks.